Hey YouTube, welcome back to TechS. It is Brandy's coming back to you guys today with a comparison of thermal pace. So when I did my delitting video, um, those all those months ago, uh, people were like, "Brian, Arctic Silver Five is crap. You got to get some cool laboratories, Liquid Pro on that on that biatch." So I did. I went out and bought some cool laboratories, Liquid Pro. And I did put it on that BH and I got some results. I also decided to test PK3, which is Prolima Tech, it's the latest uh, and greatest. So I test, I'm going to be testing these three and I'm going to be putting them all head to head. So let's get on with the results. The first test I did here was on my water cooler. So as you guys know, this died, but before it died, I did manage to get some results out. Um, and the reason why I didn't post these results earlier is because it pretty much died the next day after. I put the Cooler Bros Liquid Pro on, so I knew mm, maybe for accuracy purposes I shouldn't post these results until I get another cooler and test. So anyway, this is the results I got here, as you can see here with the lidded with the Arctic Silver 5. First up, it produced a 74 degrees uh, max temperature. These are all done in Prime 95 uh, large FFTs for max temperature, all at 25 degrees ambience and at 4.2 gigs at 1.12 volts for consistency purposes. Now, the it is important to note that there will be like a one degree variance because of the fact that, you know, when it got to um, 25 degrees or if it got hotter, I'd turn on my air con to get it down to 25 degrees and the fact that my temperature reader only reads to um, one degree Celsius so there will be an ever so slight amount of variance in ambient temps uh, the next so the first test I did was when I delitted it and that was 67 degrees that was when I delitted my chip and I put Arctic Silver on the base and on the heat spreader or on the core and the heat spreader the next test I did was the PK3 when I got that in I put that on the core and I put that on the heat spreader and that produced a 66 degree result uh, the next test when I got the Cooler Boris Liquid Pro I decided to put that on the core and on the heat spreader. I was just like, hell yeah, if this thing's gonna make a difference, I wanna see it. And that got 64 degrees, but it's important to note, I noticed at this time, in the first two minutes of running the bench, so these are all six minute benchmarks in Prime 95, it was important to note in the first two, two minutes of this um, benchmark, I knew that Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro was legit. I knew it was a product that worked because I could see that my temps were sort of staying under 60 degrees. And I think it was at this time that my cooler was actually starting to shit itself. So the next day, yeah, you know, my radiator just went so hot and um, that, that being that. But let's get on to the Animax T40. Now this produced more uh, solid and in my opinion, a lot more consistent results than the water cooler did. Because of the fact that it's an air cooler, you've only got a fan and a, and a core. So the Arctic Silver 5 on the core and the heat spread produced a result of 68 degrees. Um, the PK3 on the core and the heat spread, that produced a 67 degree result. And the Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro on the core, and then PK3 this time on the heat spreader, because you know, this stuff is expensive and I'm running out and I wanna save some of it, uh, produced a 63 degree result. So I'm going to say, let's. so these results are what I have, and let's move on to the conclusion now. Okay, so in conclusion, I will say that Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro, this stuff is legit. It works, uh, especially when you saw the Animax T40 results. They were very accurate and consistent. Uh, so this stuff is legit. It does work. Thanks for recommending me this stuff. Uh, however, it is, I will say that it's goddamn expensive. At $27 a tube of this stuff uh, for 0.15 mil, it is hella expensive. It also is a pain in the ass to spread. I didn't really enjoy spreading this stuff. And also another thing to remember about it is it is highly conductive and it is highly capacitive. Uh, however, someone was saying like you can get it for $10 a tube. Please let me know in the comments where you can get this stuff for $10 a tube. I'd love to know. Um, that being said, Arctic Silver 5. Uh, this stuff is absolutely fine. It's not shit. It works. Uh, it's very good value for money, 3.5 grams for like $8. Uh, it definitely takes the, out of these three thermal paste, it takes the value for money crown. But um, PK3, this is the last one. And I will say this stuff, this stuff is really good. I loved spreading this stuff. This was the easiest to spread out of all three. It was just amazing to work with. Um, you know, it was like spreading a virgin. It was just that good. Uh, it's non-conductive, it's non-capacitive, so if you have berserker hands, this stuff is for you, and you drop stuff everywhere, this stuff will be really good, uh, it does work really well, so, uh, in conclusion, I will say that, yeah, all three of these pace, all three of these pace are really good in their own right, none of them are shit, um, 
you know, and I think, you know, thermal, the reason why, yeah, as you guys, you know, people were saying before, the reason why Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro uh, works well on the core is because it has such high thermal conductivity. So it is legit and it does, you know, deliver on its thermal conductivity claims. Uh, you know, the core is so small, so it's, it needs that high, um, you know, sensitive thermal paste to work properly but uh you know there are people out there that are saying like you know i'm getting like a 15 degree drop a 20 degree drop and i'm you know i question these people are you trying like are you trying properly are you spreading your paste properly or are you just like you know just slapping this stuff on and just like dropping it on and going yeah let the liquid pro do all the work because you know if you apply your thermal paste properly um, you know, essentially what thermal paste does is it just fills in imperfections. It's not meant to be like a, uh, you know, a block. It's meant to be like a paste that fills in gaps. So that's why my results aren't as great, you know, aren't as, you know, I don't think they're as different as someone else. But, you know, I saw in the forum, I was reading up about it, some guy getting a 30 degree drop and then like the variance between his cores is like 10 degrees that in my opinion is a clear indicator of bad conduct uh, bad contact so you know if you're getting such huge degrees in in your cores um i question you as to are you con you know are you installing your heatsink properly so that's a, a very important part is getting a thin layer of this stuff on and then getting a nice uh, making sure your surfaces are all flat as can be and if they're concaved or if they're really off then go sand them back go lap them don't be afraid to do that so but i will say that you know the heat spreader and the core they're really they're pretty much getting really flush and a lot of heat sinks coming out nowadays are really flush so there should be you know you guys should be getting really consistent results um with any with any paste any decent thermal paste that you use so anyway guys i hope in conclusion uh you like this uh, please give it a thumbs up if you did and if you have any questions or comments please leave a comment in the comment section below and if you haven't already subscribe to tech your city well i'll be coming back to you guys with some more tech videos uh so ultimately yeah uh cooler products liquid pro on the core it's a good recommendation anyway guys peace out for now brand easy bye